this is a more complicated sentence. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of <coughs> work out the way in which he describes all the world's language as having this, all the world's languages having the same structure uh, in terms of phrases. And he lays out a few rules by which all languages can be described. Uh, and the first one is that what the entire phrase is about is what its head word is about. And let me just, so, so what we got, he, he, so the sentence here we have is uh, the governor of California from Illinois gave the voters, uh, gave his voters a surprise after the election, right? So, and what, <coughs> what I just wanted to lay out here is even though this is a longer sentence, it still breaks down into the noun phrase and the verb phrase. And what he's calling the head uh, of the noun phrase is governor, and then what he would call the head of the verb phrase is, is the verb gave. And if sort of, sort of, sort of basically what we're, he's saying that the whole sentence kind of breaks down into this governor gave, right? And because those, you know, it's, it's, that's the main subject of the sentence, and then you've got the main verb, and that's the overall structure. And even if you didn't, if you kind of missed everything else, if you just focus on those two, you already have a sense of what's going on, right? Um, and what he's doing is, is sort of saying that every, if you, if you were to translate this language, or, or this sentence into a different language, right, whatever, German or Swahili or Persian or whatever it is, you could, you could map it into this same tree structure, right? That's the, that's the thesis, right? That you take any language, you translate it into another language, and it would translate into this tree structure with, with a kind of an exception. And we're going to get to that in a, in a moment, right? But basically that, um, that the ordering might change uh, within each piece. That, that there, he calls it, it's, a, it's, a, it's not really a tree, but it's a mobile, right? So you can imagine these, these pieces kind of turning around, right? Uh, in, in which the order might be different, but you still have the same underlying structure uh, so that whatever language you use, it'll still fit the same structure, right? And part of it is that, you know, every language is going to, it's going to designate a head, you know, the, the noun phrase and the verb phrase, and it's going to designate the head of the noun phrase and the head of the verb phrase as being sort of the main words that define the noun phrase and the verb phrase. The second <coughs> piece of this is that um, that each, especially you know, especially the verb phrase, but he, he says it's, it's, it's true of the noun phrase, is that, that the verb is going to define a specific set of role players, he calls them, which uh, are necessitated by the verb. So when you use the word give, you're, you're committed. You have to have both an indirect object and a direct object. You can't say he gave a cat, or he gave uh, his voters, and that's, that's the end of the sentence, right? You, you, have to, you, have to, you have to tell what he gave, right? Uh, otherwise, it's not a complete sentence, because the verb is demanding that role player uh, of the thing that it gave, right? Um, and then, but also, that it's demanding this role player of what it, to whom did you give it, right? This is the other uh, role player that that sentence is demanding. Right? And it's, the verb is demanding it. So that verb is designating these, well, it's, des it's also demanding a subject. So he gave his voters a surprise. It's demanding a subject, an indirect object, and a direct object. And it's also, uh, we'll get to this in a se second, but it's also going to give you the order. It's going to say, well, you can't, you can't say he gave a surprise his voters. That, you know, it's, I guess you could kind of understand what's, what's being meant, but it's, it's not grammatically correct uh, because the, that first position is the position for the indirect object. So what, um, what's important here is that every verb is laying out a structure of relationships between the different nouns, right? So that um, essentially um, with the verbs, you're, you're not getting just a particular meaning it's, it's what's important about the verb is not just the meaning of the word, but the set of relationships that that verb is establishing between its role players, right? And so the grammar, if a grammar is actually setting up a set of relationships, the role player of the verb, or the verb as role player, is doing this work of establishing relationships, right? The noun also has, uh, it could be, it, it can have role players as well. For instance, here, the 
governor of California, right? So if you're a governor, you must be the governor of some state, right? And so the, if you're going to be does, you know, if you're going to be naming that state, that's also a role player for the noun, right? Um, the next piece is that <coughs> in addition to role players, a noun or a verb can have modifiers, but those modifiers, they're, they're kind of, uh, I guess they're, they're sort of extra added things, and so they're not considered sort of part of that same tree branch as the verb and role players. You have it outside, you have the verb and its role players, then you have the prepositional phrase as, as modifiers to this. So it does, so after the election, this is happening after the election, it's not something that's essential to the verb. You don't have to have this, um, but you could have that. So all of this that's going on here, it's, they're, they're much more closely linked up to the verb uh, as something that's implied by the verb itself. This here is, uh, is a modifier that could be or might not be there. I mean, here you've got the noun and its role players. The, 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 the role players of the noun, um, they're, they're actually, it's, it's actually optional as well. You could say the governor from Illinois, um, but um, it, it is something that's sort of um, defining something that belongs to that noun, that's sort of inseparable from that noun, whereas this modifier is something that's it's sort of additional information uh, that you might or might not have in the sentence, right? So, uh, but basically we're just kind of defining where it goes on the tree, right? Um, <coughs> so those are the the three basic rules, I mean, there's another rule I'm not going to go into, um, <coughs> but what I just want to indicate is, again, is that the way in which the verb indicates its role players is going to be providing a particular function to each noun um, that's, that's playing a role in the, in the structure of the verb, right? Um, so. So what he says is that there's a, there's a, there's a sense in which, the, in which the verb is a kind of dictator that kind of tells, what all the, tells the nouns what they have to do, right? Um, and so the <coughs> they do it through these things called case tags that you, you can't really see very well in English because they're, they're, um, they're given by word order, but there are other languages, you know, Latin or German, in which the case tags on nouns are much clearer. You have to actually change the nouns in order for the case to be apparent. Uh, in English, uh, it's the word order that does it. That's why the word order is so uh, important in English, where the, the indirect object has to come before the direct object, right, and after the verb. So um, there's also a sense in which the prepositions assign case tags. It's the same kind of thing where the, <coughs> the preposition is designating the role of the noun that comes afterwards. Uh, and it does it through a case tag as well. Um, the of California, that's why you have an of. Uh, the of is sort of playing the role of that case tag. Um, <coughs> I'm not going to go into the details of this, but basically, you know, it's, these are the kind of rules that he's, um, that he's cataloging that come from uh, Noam Chomsky's theory of uh, universal grammar, but that end up um, as rules that <coughs> that define how all languages function, right? So it's, it's a kind of a grammar, it's, it's called a universal grammar because it's not a grammar of any particular language, but it's a grammar that applies to all languages that exist in the world, right? And so that's why it's a universal grammar, and, but it's also the, um, the argument here that Pinker's using for why we have a language module, because he's saying, well, where does this universal grammar come from? It must come from a language module because some, you know, it's it's not coming from the languages themselves, um, because why would they why would they all have this same underlying grammar? So um, questions. I know it's the, the tree thing is kind of confusing. I, I'm I'm not so concerned that you know all the details about the tree, but um, what I do want you to remember is that the the tree structure is that or the phrase structure is something that's common to all the world's languages, and it's a structure that allows you to take a very complex sentence and kind of break it down into kind of the, the, the major component pieces.